something feels off here and i think it's it's the fact that like your corpse is going to change and that frame is going to change your loadout so like we know that that is going to change right. um so should the rest of these be static because we were talking before about a game that is is very um uh what's what's the opposite of static variable right like uh the like what is important to your character changes which fundamentally changes how you uh approach how your character approaches the game right okay so i'm wondering if what purpose were you made for uh, can we marinate on this for a second yeah yeah absolutely no this is uh this has been the thing i've been sitting on for a minute uh i mean the the fact is as far as the writing goes we have a ton of difficult questions to answer here uh, sure like, for example, we still need to determine if skills can't have more than three pips or more than three dice assigned to them. That's, like, a pretty simple A or B, but it's really going to affect what kind of game it actually is. Um, let me see. I think the idea that they can't gives us some framework to work within in the game and kind of, like, inherently ties the game like this is not a game about progression you will change bodies and that will reset everything um yeah but maybe but maybe there's like a way we can tie one of these questions where like not counting your starting uh or your personnel like your personality affects something differently where like you can depending on like how you've answered this question um you can have an extra guy in the, this skill or something yeah um but but in general i think i'm leaning towards like the idea of no like three three being sorry three pips or three dice uh three well oh uh Right, right. That was, uh, I guess, three pips. Because, okay. Sorry, I, I got lost. I got lost. We didn't, we didn't, play, we didn't do this last week, and I'm. <laughs> yeah, I no, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the same thing. I mean, th this is actually, it's kind of what I've been struggling with a lot in terms of, uh, just the overall problem of character creation it's kind of mm -hmm. hand in hand with the whole existential theme of the game right because right. all other ttrpgs are about you're building a person that will certainly change over the course of the campaign but like that is a static thing to some extent right and this by just by definition is not that um so it's a question of what is static and if the answer there is nothing then 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 do we even have a character creation or do we just say hey you just you start out with these resources and good luck i i, I almost like that more where like the frame decides what what your loadout is and then you get that ascribed amount of pips and you get your energy bar yeah um and then like maybe there's a series uh, uh, of maybe these questions um, nah, I'm gonna drop this dune thing because it's it's getting stuck in my craw right now um, and I will grab a different book um that way it's i'm divorced from it right now um yeah and like maybe there's a way we can like order these questions or where like their importance changes and that that like gives you an oomph for a booster i don't know do we need that like i i like the idea of having these philosophical questions right um yeah 
how do we make them affect gameplay is the question, right? Like, Yeah, so the only way that you can meaningfully have these things affect gameplay is if there is a static element to your character. And mm. it makes some sense to me that, like, your total pip pool might not change, even if you switch corpses. Um, certainly your loadout would change, your energy would probably change. Uh, but, like... It, it would make sense to me that your pit pool stays the same, right? Or it, yeah, or it grows I linearly. Yeah, I, I think I like the idea that, like, um... Here's, here's, like, an, idea. Is, here's an idea. Yeah, okay. Have the answer to the questions be freeform, and just for each question you answer, you can either take on a special skill, or you can add one to your pit pool. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Or, or, or you can associate like a a die with uh for each of these questions you can associate a die with one of the skills like like you're saying answer it free form and tie it to one of these skills and then when you have like that um like epiphany moment where something changes that's like you have to reset one of those free form answers um and you have to tie it to a different skill so it's like uh, well, well, okay, no, because you're you're already resetting a bunch of stuff with epiphanies already. I I feel like that's adding a whole other thing that you have to add or that you have to change. Now, are, are are we are, like? Because because an, an, an epiphany an epiphany is what happens when the player runs out of pips. Uh, when you run out of pips, the AI experiences an epiphany. It's a major life changing event. During this event, the player describes how this event changes them, at which point all skills and pips reset, and the player proceeds as a reborn AI. So this and is then like, we have this the is same. Like we have the same thing happen um, with when you die, right? Uh, when you die, I assume that's an epiphany. So. Yeah, maybe maybe that's maybe that's the um Yeah, yeah. When all the energy in a corpse is expended, the corpse moves into a new body and pips are reset. So so maybe pips don't get reset um when you have an epiphany. Um Right? Like that that would be an easy solve there. Cause essentially we have two things happening in the game that are doing the same thing, right? Yeah, so basically Epiphany just resets skills and Death resets pips. Well, well, isn't that the same thing, right? Like, because you're tying, you're tying as you, um... That's the same thing, right? Like, if you no. reset your pips. No, no, so, um, a pip, so each player begins play with a set... Each player begins play with a set of pips with which they either assign them to a skill, putting a d4 into it, or adding a plus one to whatever you roll. So a pip can just be a static plus one to a particular roll, or it can add right. uh, an extra dice to a, to a particular skill. So resetting all of your pips can mean resetting skills, um, but not necessarily. Ha. Well, 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 yeah, 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 it would. Well, so, so, so let's break down like the, the initial conceit of the game is you have a set of pips. You don't spend those until you need to, right? Like you run into something and like now you got to climb something. You have fucking five pips that you can either roll a d4 and add plus five, or you can put a... Uh, um, you can put another die in there. In order to do this activity, you need to have at least one die in there. Um, so you have to assign a die when you're playing if you want to do something. Well, wait, and don't, then you, you can... don't you start with a d4, just one die in every skill? No, 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 no. Uh, so that that's how that's how the game functions. Like that's where you like deplete things is you don't have anything in anything. Um, and then as you go, you need to do something, right? Like say you need to like bust open this door. Um, in order to do that, you need to have that physicality skill. So I remove one pit from my pit pool and now I have a D4 that I can roll. 
I could assign more pips to that if I'd like, um, and then I can roll more dice. But that permanently removes pips from my pool. I can also just add those as static plus ones. So I could just keep one die in something and add plus ones to it. However, as you keep playing, you're going to run into different things that you need to do. So you'll be adding at least one die to things mm -hmm. in order. So your pit pool's generally going down, going down, going down. So when you die, you get to reset everything and start over, which is great because now you've got a little bit more freedom and maneuverability to move around. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, epiphany and death is the same thing. That's yeah. So like, I, I I think we need to divorce those two, right? But not divorce them. We just need to make them one thing. It's not. Oh yeah, we we need to make them one thing, or make or make an epiphany do something else. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, we're just you know we're we're calling a cat and a dog the same animal. Or not yeah. even. We're calling two cats different animals. Well, you know, they they do the same thing, but they're triggered by different things. Maybe that's the difference. Yeah. Um Because one is when yeah. you actually one is when you actually run out of pips, and the other is when you run out of energy. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so I wonder if like, because to me, epiphany is like. Like, let's break down the word, right? Like, you're having an epiphany, like, when there is a something fundamental changed, right? Um, should we tie that to the mechanical outringing of, like, you've run out of hit points? Or, like, if we're going to have these open-ended questions, like you said, should we tie it to that? Like, because if we're going to have these open-ended questions, consume presumably those should be like your personality traits, right? Those should be the things that define you. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I guess I'm asking you philosophically. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like I, I, I honestly don't know, man. Like we're, we're in a game where your identity is very loosely defined and the whole point of it is that people don't define your identity for you it feels weird where the game is like okay this is your identity mm. having i'm i'm honestly i if we're going to have the questions i think they need to just be open ended i don't even think we should I make do. i don't even think we should make bullet points and I think that yeah. I think that the only things that they do are for each question that you answer, you can add a pip to to your pool, or you can pick a skill and you can just start with a D four in it. Yeah, um, I think it would be. Yeah, I, I like the idea that they're open ended and you tie it to a skill. Um, so you start with a die in each in each of those skills that you tie whatever this open ended thing is, and then I think like what an epiphany is if you run counter to that statement, you have to change it, right? Like if, if something if something change it in what sense? Like what in what in what significant way to gameplay does that like? Yeah, I, uh, so. So what I think it is, is we have to make these statements personality defining instead, right? Like, like what matters to your character? And we need to tie, like, instead of being like, um, let me look at those questions so like, again. What kind, of AI, what kind of AI are you, right? I say, I'm a peaceful, I'm a pacifist AI. And then something happens during gameplay where I find myself really enjoying violence. So, okay, I have to change that now. What does that mean? I, I think what it means is you have to redefine that set. Like, mechanically, I think it's what it means is you have to make a new open-ended statement um, and tie it to a different skill, and then you lose that die in that skill is, is what that means. Okay. Um... So, so like follow up follow up question we have six skills and there are five hmm. questions um 
is the plan here to just have you everybody starts out basically with one skill that they don't have anything in let's let's do it this way uh that last question what what what's your starting course look like yeah. that only affects your uh loadout right okay so we have four questions um and so you start um, out gameplay basically with two skills that you have no points in so let's do it let's do um uh what what, what Let's take out what kind of AI are you to what is what is your purpose, um, and then we'll just have the two questions because they're kind of the same things. Um, so let's make these statements that you can have like a defining thing for. Um, I kind of want. So what is your first thought? Um, what is your purpose? Um, That's like my, per is it just one? Maybe we just have one question. Don't actually hate that. Well, it'd be two, right? Cause we'd have the one for loadout. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we could, we could have like, what was your first thought as like a non-mechanical thing? Just as like a, it's kind of nice flavor. Eh. I, I think that what we what I can do is after the important questions, um, yeah, I can include a little like flavor box of being like, if you're trying to get into like the mood of like an AI, here are some other, you know, just purely narrative questions to ask yourself, right? Uh, in, in the, we just in the, have, like, the, the bio box on like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, right? like, yeah, like, that's exactly yeah. That, right. Um, Okay, cool. So, to be clear. So there's two questions that, yeah. like, that's pretty much it. <laughs> One's open-ended, and here's here's a stack of bodies picked the one you want. <laughs> okay, so players answer two questions in character creation. For the first, they answer the question uh... Uh, hang on. First question is open-ended, and players can answer however they like. Um, when they do, they add one d four to a skill relevant to their answer yeah oh he, here's something we can do with the body too with the equipment uh with the energy and load um we can have like three options where it's like one is high energy low load uh one is their like both kind of like middling uh and then one is like uh high load low energy yeah yeah, exactly. Um, okay, and so for the second question, players choose their starting corpse from the options provided, noting the relevant, uh, not skills, uh, relevant energy, and shit what what's the other thing that the body gives you load load that's it energy and it gives load. You... <laughs> your body gives you a load <laughs> classic um, that's that's nice right that nice okay okay so players answer two questions in character creation the first question is open-ended players can answer however they like when they do they add 1d4 to a skill relevant to their answer for the second question players choose their starting corpse from the options provided noting that the relevant or noting the relevant energy and load points on their character sheet good summary uh, yeah yeah dope um okay cool so what is your purpose and what does your starting corpse look like? So there we're going to need a table. Um, 
And I don't know how much of an option this is for you. Um, it would be very dope to have like little spaceman icons or something with like different EVA suits for this page. Just because mm. uh, just because otherwise character creation is going to look a little bit drab because it's only two questions. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to put a picture on this page for sure. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I mean, how, how I see it is like, I know I'm pointing and you can't see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> yeah, but, go on. Uh, but yeah, I, I think what you're see, seeing there is like, yeah, I think we, we have our head on the same, same, same idea. Okay, so corpse. corpse. Energy. Energy. Lo loads. Which loads. Load? Just do load? Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Just write the word bust a nut. <laughs> it still absolutely upsets me that bust a nut used to mean get mad. Yeah, I used it today. Like, just not okay. Uh, I, was like, I was like, every network's making me want to bust a nut. <laughs> Dan, Evan, um... Yeah. I see, I see you wrote names for the corpses. It seemed weirdly appropriate. Um, I was, I did mean it as a joke, but the more I think about it, I uh, kind of like the personal touch. So I, I, I don't hate it. Um, here's, here's what I was thinking, like, busted EVA. Yeah, fair. Uh, busted, busted Evan. Busted. Um, uh, cybernetic. Uh, cybernetic. Um, what's the uh, word I'm looking for? Cybernetic, uh, not corpse, because we already have the word corpse. Um, uh, hardwired cybernetics. What would the? I actually think the busted EVA would probably have the highest load, right? Um, that would probably make the most sense. Yeah. It, like you got the most stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 like biologically or or genetically enhanced would be like the high energy. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, I did these in the. Okay, yeah. I yeah, they were, no, that works. Yeah, I switched them. We're good. Uh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> um, after this, you see, like they've got that's it, that's character creation, right? That's a page. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll have to make sure we put in the information about. Um, um, we'll have to record your pit, uh, your pit pool. It's at the beginning. Everyone begins with ten oh. pips. We'll have to look at that number again, just to because we only have um, six skills. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you start with one. Um, I almost feel like it should be more st starved than that than ten, but we can work on the numbers afterwards. Um, okay. Just because. I w like I like the idea of like you're kind of trying to balance where you're putting uh, putting your points so that like when you reach a point where you've already installed them all you're like ah oh, fuck I can't do this thing yeah. um, um <sighs> so, so quick question um mm. what. 
Okay, no, so we do have these little sub skills. What are the sub skills? Are they. I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe. Pick, pick one. Do we just want to get rid of one of these? Because I think that the idea was that you had special skills that were like. Oh, attached, yeah, 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 yeah. attached to a body. Uh, do we want to do we want to have maybe a third question where you pick a, a specialty? Well, yeah, maybe it's just like when you whenever you get a new body, pick one. Well, what about when you start? Yeah, you, I mean, like that counts as a new body, right? Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. All right. Um, OK, so finally, players pick one of the specialty skills from the table below presented in light gray um and maybe this is like whenever whenever you're doing a task that involves this thing you get a plus one plus one. as if as if you were putting it on it right uh, plus one is relevant. Okay. And I'm actually just gonna... Put those there. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna put these right here, because there's really no reason to have... And then I can put mechanics. Oh, where do the specialty skills, though? I thought those specialty skills were the... Wait, what? Like the palming. Yeah, the, those are the skills presented in light gray, right? Where the, oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pick one of the specialty skills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see here. What color is that? There we go. I'm just gonna make this. It should still be noted that you need to like uh, you need to put a die in that base skill to use um, to use it, right? Like you get a plus one if palming comes up, but you still need to. But only if I have yeah, something I, in stealth. Yeah, like you still need to invest a pip in order to like uh, in order to roll that die. Um, but if palming comes up, you're preternaturally, um... Well, what if I... what if my... uh... hang on. Uh, what if I have, like, a 1d4 in stealth from my first question? Then you're good. You can always... Okay. A, a, as long as you have a die in something, you can roll it, right? Like, that. that's... Okay, players... still need a... Or in what's the word I'm looking for here? Like over skill, larger skill. Um, uh, um, blank. The okay. governing. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, we need. Hang on. Uh, one of the chosen specialty sub skills. I don't even think we need to just call it a specialty. One of the chosen specialties represented in gray. Um, and then we can delineate by, by just saying like, skills are in black, specialties are in gray. Yeah, like that. Okay. Hey, anyone who's watching, it's really important that you use concise language when you develop oh games. Oh my sweet people get god. <laughs> It's fucking annoying, but yeah, it's literally it's the least exciting conversations you'll ever hear amongst game designers, but it's so important. It's I mean, it's like it, it's it's one of the because whenever you're playing a game, it always breaks down into like whenever there's some rules issue, it's like, OK, I need to think like, what are they saying exactly? And whatever yeah. they are saying exactly on the page needs to be like. And like, so behind the scenes, what you're doing is figuring out how to use the terminology exactly. 
So like what we ran into right there is we had like two things that had a very similar name. So like we had a potential confusion point. Um, And those, I don't know. We talk about those things a lot when we develop games. I mean, you you have to. We we learned this the hard way with Vault Peddlers. We did not nearly enough of this work uh, uh, up front. And to add to all of that, Vault Peddlers is like what fifty pages, sixty pages. Like it's not a yeah. huge, it's not a huge RPG, but it's certainly bigger than this is. Um, so when you fuck up one thing, you've got to correct it on like twenty other pages. Uh, and it sucks. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. Well, and that then means... Sorry, go yeah, ahead. Go on. I was going to say, and then you'll lose track of where it is in the book, and then oh, you won't yeah. correct something. And... No, fuck, fuck all that. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got at least a working idea of character creation. Uh, from this point... Can we say... Yeah. I mean, like, it looks like a page and a half is what it looks like, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's probably going to be longer because we'll have to do images and, like, organize the text. Um, So what did we have initially? Three pages? I believe so, yeah. I think that's probably going to be accurate to where we're at with images. Okay, cool. I mean, that just means it's going to look like very neat i think that's going to be awesome yeah um okay cool so moving on then at this point we're in mechanics um let's take a look here yeah we'll want to make sure that based on the conversation we just had about like you investing points as you play instead of at the beginning we'll want to make sure that that carries through into the mechanical conversation yeah skill or adding one you need at least one die in order um, in order to use a skill why does it format it like this it's so weird oh is it is it is it uh when you do a table does it everyone have the same problem I have actually no the tables are the most reliable part of this document so no like tables I'm sorry the outline oh yeah no for some reason when I changed like the page size to this thing it wants to indent everything like three inches into the center and I can't get it to not do that it's it's really weird it's bizarre ooh I, I think I know what's probably happening yeah. You changed the page size to six by nine, right? Uh, yeah, or the closest one to it, yeah. So it's it's probably indenting the same amount is the issue actually, instead of like a relative uh, indent, right? Like probably oh. it was an inch indent before, and it's still doing that. That's probably true. Yeah, I wonder how I fix that. Probably under format, I would imagine. Align and indent, yes. decrease indent. Yep. Yep, format, and you can uh, increase or decrease indent. Holy shit. <laughs> did you just <laughs> did you just correct me on Google Docs? Yeah, my man. <laughs> Actually, what happened was doing a bunch of like graphic design and layout work for vault templates probably is what did. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Um, I hurt myself today. What if a uh, what if the music video for Hurt was like? Um. Uh, was, what, are, uh, what are you about to say to me? Johnny, what are you about Johnny to put Cash... into my ears? What if the music video for Hurt... Now hear me out. What if the music video for Hurt was like Johnny Cash inside of a Sizzlers or a Shoney's 
at like the all you can eat buffet and it was about it was about going <laughs> Fucking cool. Would have been way cooler than the actual one, let me tell you. <laughs> She's still giving, like, the same, same thing otherwise, right? I'll tell, like, I'll tell you this much. A song about ruining your life and every and hurting the people you love is a lot more true. It hits a lot more in the gut coming from inside of Shoney's. <laughs> <laughs> It changes the whole context in a really lovely way. I don't think it changes the context. I think it magnifies it. I think it I think yeah. it just it shines a brighter light on something that was otherwise very romantic and and beautiful. <laughs> and now it's like, no, you don't understand. I actually did some hurt very bad today. things. Yeah, I actually hurt yeah. myself today. You want to see a... my empire of dirt? Come into the Shonies <laughs> at two at two p.m. on a Thursday. Trent Reznor is like he crushed it. That's actually what that song's about. <laughs> hey, something I heard something fucked up on a podcast, and it was like, do you think that uh, kids now are going to? find a Nine Inch Nails album and be like, oh, this is from that dude who does all the movie soundtracks. Uh, you know, he used to have a band. <laughs> hmm. um, hey, how, how, how many Nine Inch Nails did you used to be? Actually, not very much. Um, I like... Uh, I, I skipped over the really, like edgy emo like part of my life and like went into like started started with stuff like anti-flag and moved into rancid mm. and like i had some metalhead friends who like mm. were vaguely you know like they they probably listened to nine inch nails but it wasn't something that we ever really listened to uh because i was uh I was uh, in a group of uh, little posers, and God mm. forbid we be caught listening to anything that wasn't like, I don't know, we were big into like Nirvana and like System of a Down and like Rage Against the Machine and Anti-Flag and like Rancid and all of these bands that like were quote unquote like real musicians or whatever, but... We never listened to stuff like Nine Inch Nails. We never listened to stuff like My Chemical Romance, which, by the way, in hindsight, My Chem is Pretty good. fucking incredible. Oh my god! Uh, no, I listened to I listened to Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge like probably six months to a year ago for the first time, and that album fucking rips. It's really good for like for the kind of music that it is, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so no, I, I was not super into Nine Inch Nails. I had heard some of that stuff, but I was like, oh, this is like a bunch of sad boy shit. And, and I'm too cool for that, even though now, you know, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, like, Downward Spiral is pretty much about Trent Reznor wanting to kill himself. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's also like Starfuckers Incorporated, which is an insane song. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like, I listen to a bunch of punk and for some reason I like, um, I was so deep into Nine Inch Nails that I don't know why or what my onboarding was, but I had like fucking everything in my CD case. <laughs> I, I would yeah. not have picked them for you. Downward Spiral, The Fragile. I mean, I, I like fucking. I, was, I had a real soft spot for Downward Spiral. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think objectively, like, he is. The contents of his songs are fairly punk rock because he's fairly anti authority, authority. Yeah, no, I think so. Like, it was, it was, uh, we really, that's honestly the thing with a lot of popular bands is like, 
they themselves weren't super big into like the music industry or whatever. They didn't love it either. They just took advantage of it. Sure. Um, yeah. 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 Exactly. And so, like, I don't know. It's it's one of these things where you're maybe giving a little bit of deserved criticism when you're like, oh, they're posers, they're sellouts, whatever. But also at the same time, I don't know, like people need to live, people need to eat, and like you shouldn't blame somebody for doing that. Like there's nothing wrong with making popular music, you know? And and Reznor's music's all for free for anyone to like download and remix and like fucking like if oh. you want to take yeah, Actually, yeah. I didn't know he I didn't know he did that. That's cool. <laughs> But blue and broken. Oh, man, I kind of want to listen to some Nine Inch Nails. Jeez. <laughs> uh, okay, so each character begins with a set of pips, which they can either, um, uh, which during play, um, uh, pips during play, they can use in the following way. Either. Oh. Set of pips, uh, which during play they can use in the following ways. Oh, I see what you're doing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Assign them to a skill, putting a D4 into it, or adding plus one to whatever you roll. Absolutely. Um, so we should probably note... Um, uh, once you spend a pip by assigning a die to a skill, it, it, it is removed from your pool. Uh, pips that are used as a plus one on a skill do not get removed from your pool. Okay. Wait, what? Right. So this is this is the this is the this is why you got to start with a small allotment because like. You can always add a plus one, but in order to roll a skill, you have to have a die in it. So you would want to keep the plus one. Say you say say our limit is you have to roll like a four in order to succeed on something. Like it, it, it is more beneficial to keep the plus ones. However, the more things you need to do, the more you have to assign a pip to something, and thus lowering the amount of uh, static plus ones that you can put into something. Hmm. Okay, that does actually change. Um, are you sure you want to do that? Cause I, Absolutely. Because I, I feel like if you just say once these pips have been assigned just in general, they can't be taken away, whether it's for a die or whether it's for a... Um, uh, whether it's for a plus one... You can still have those big pools, and you're still gonna work your way, uh, work your way up. Like, so I, the, the idea here is that like you're you're more variable the beginning of a body. Um, like, you don't want to assign skills if you don't have to, um, and you want to work in tandem with the people that you're doing things with. But eventually, you're going to assign most of these skills and you won't be able to add those plus ones and you'll be at the mercy of the die roll. Um, it creates, I think, a more dynamic play style in that like you get to like kind of choose what you're doing as you go. And then boom, once once you evolve to a new corpse, um, you're right back at the beginning. Okay, taken away. Um... Pips used to add plus one are returned to the pool uh, once the roll has been completed. Uh, finally, uh, skills cannot have any more than three pips assigned at any given time. Does that need to be broken up, do you think? I feel I worry that uh, having that in like a block of text is gonna 
Yeah. Loose short, stuff. short, short paragraphs work better. Yeah. Um. Okay. Is there a test? The sign comes up. Um. I mean, do do what you want here too, because I will. I mean, I'll also have to be because I'll probably be putting this into two columns and then I'll have to reorganize uh, things for white space flow. Um, okay. So don't do you want, do, uh, well, I guess that's fine. Yeah. Cause you're going to have to add images. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be too, too, don't be too worried about it. Okay. Um, well, Although I, I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I want, I, you're already doing all of the art and like layout for this. So I want the import to be as easy for you as possible. Um, Tell you what, on that note, it's not that much. Hey, let's change the name of Mysteries to Dr. Pibsteries. And then there, we'll do it as like a... There you go. We're, yeah, we're monetized now. Yeah. Okay, that looks like garbage. Uh, okay, cool. Um, let's see here. Right. So when the player runs out of pips, the AI experiences an epiphany. Um, this isn't true anymore, right? Epiphanies are something else now, correct? Yeah, epiphanies are where you gotta change. You gotta uh, change your sentence. Okay. And you gotta seance. Well, well, you gotta change your sentence, and then what? You gotta you take the D four out of the skill you chose in question <laughs> one. And you put it into yeah. a different skill? Okay. Yeah. Probably one associated with whatever the fuck just happened. Um, and also, epiphanies don't happen when you run out of pips anymore, right? They happen just no, when yeah. you do something that conflicts with your first... With your, with your purpose. So, yeah. Um, so if that's the case, I'm actually... Okay. Um, what does happen when they run out of pips? Uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're stuck with the loadout you have until you die or get into a new court somehow. Okay. Uh, so the player is stuck with the loadout they have. Oh, so we probably uh, shouldn't use the term loadout because uh, that is, uh... Uh, with the stats they have. Yeah. I mean, I'll change this wording. I'm just getting the basic ruling down. Absolutely. Uh, until they either die or find. Can you just get into a new body? I don't see why that couldn't be a thing. Um, it would make sense that if you have, like, uh, for example, where was it in here? Like, uh, like a hardware or something like that? Or like a database specialty? I, I mm. could definitely see using that for, like, importing stuff in. I'm, I worry that, that that kind of runs counter to the idea that you're, like, balancing this pool, if you can do it whenever you choose. Maybe maybe there is a narrative way we can make it so, like, uh, once you left the shell, you got locked it. You get, like, cy you get cyber-locked somehow into the bodies. Okay. Um but that's that's some narrative lifting we'll have to do. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So those are... Correct me if I'm wrong. That is all of the mechanics having to do with pips, right? That's everything for pips. Okay, cool. So I'm actually just going to put that under an H2. Peepos. Dr. Pibs. Dr. Pips. Um, Dr. Pips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a soda that runs counter to fucking Dr. Pib. I pib extra, sorry. Yeah. Dr. Pib and Mr. Pepper. <laughs> Mr. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Pepper. I thought we lost you in Bolivia. Fucking cool. Uh, we should coordinate um, <laughs> for the next game we play. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you have a uh, Dr. Pib and a Mr. Pepper? And see if anyone catches on. I was about to say, Derek is running Vault Peddlers for us, so... <laughs> I call 
Mr. Pepper. I feel like that should be mine. I came up with you came up with Dr. Pib. I came up with Mr. God Pepper. Damn it. That's my that's my it. brainchild. <laughs> That Ugh. sucks. I wish I was dead. <laughs> it's like the five-year-old that didn't think to play with the Aladdin sword, and now he's really mad because all the other kids are having a good time with it. <laughs> boy, boy, that five-year-old's wishing for his own death a lot. <laughs> Timmy really, uh... He's not doing great, huh? <laughs> No, he's fine. He loves he loves this stuff. Okay. <laughs> Is that five year old drinking beer? Yeah, he loves this stuff. Yeah, he can't get enough of it. Yeah, and like look at this table at the bottom of page seven under mysteries. Like, for some reason the formatting on this thing is just super weird. Yeah. Huh. I don't know why that is. I don't know. It's like it's aligning not in accordance to the box. Well, and it's not even wrapping. Like I can't pull I can't pull this uh the bottom of the box down or anything to to just get it to, to wrap downward. I don't know. I don't know. Whole thing's weird. Um, <laughs> we can do a sequel to this game called God in a Court, and it's a courtroom drama. Objection! Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, so mysteries drive the action, represent the unknown data and AI that create the impulse. To explore the waste. Don't need an and. Um, player gets a clue. Okay. Wow. Okay, so this sentence is a big... That's a big just load of stuff that we haven't even remotely prepped for at the top of... Uh, mysteries. Well, well. So go to the top of page eight, just below that table. Uh, yeah. When the player gets a clue, they add a neuron into their treasury. I'm. Yes. We're we're introducing three different uh, terms that concepts have, here. Yeah, that have not been uh, have not been wow not been introduced. Okay. Um, okay. So. So when the player um, as the player gets closer to solving these mysteries, the GM provides them with a neuron. Provide me with a neuron. Which is added to the uh, treasury section of the character sheet. Uh, neurons. Neurons have no use until the mystery has been solved. Um, when this point is reached, however, players can use to 
I wonder... Hmm... Oh, should mysteries be on character creation? Um... So, hmm, that's a good question. Hmm, shit. Um, well, so we know that the first mystery for the AI is established just by purpose of the game you get like a signal or whatever and the first mystery is solving that signal but i don't yeah. think that's for the corpse right you have two mysteries one is for the ai and one is for the corpse it's like how they died yeah because your 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 ai mystery is like find the source of the signal or um you were all woken um and it's a group mystery right like that that is something that you were all solving um and then the corpse should be it should be ostensibly like clues about who you were uh it should be about the body that you're in yeah okay um I, actually maybe they don't it doesn't actually look like um mystery maybe mystery isn't the right word because like um we're not assigning anything there right like because we're just like the corpse one is just anytime you get a clue it's about the body that you're in um yeah that's true that's not really it's not really a question right it's, it's more just like you're finding things out about yourself um and then the god one is like that impetus of action that you all have you're all hunting down this um this transmission um which is more of a mystery than the other one is um hmm. it's more of a mystery than the other one is but also like it seems like it's externally defined in ways that the corpse one isn't maybe we call this section like uh like clues or something maybe clue is the wrong word it feels like out of place in the setting but um data data shard uh data shark uh I'm gonna, mega, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a mega bite of this sandwich. Uh, that was a funny joke. Fuck, I just realized how hungry I am. Because I said mega bite of a sandwich? Yeah, I was like, fuck, that sounds really good right now. <laughs> it's fucked up that my joke didn't elicit a laugh, but it made you really hungry. <laughs> it made me really hungry. <laughs> Like, uh, so so let me let me talk real quick about what I'm thinking here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah, wondering I'm wondering if the idea of locking neurons behind a gate is fun. Or if like whenever you find a clue, you should get this temporary pip to use as you see fit. Um which seems more like a fun option than like hey you have like a bunch of things that you're going to eventually get but you can't use them yet yeah uh, i i completely agree especially i think if we are limiting the pool of of pips uh having yeah. having neurons immediately accessible makes a lot of sense I also think that we should clarify that neurons are temporary. When you spend them, they, the, the, the die does not remain in your pool. Uh, and when you spend them for a plus one, it gets eliminated. Like, uh, they, they're temporary things, right? So you should be generating a lot of these by, like, finding shit out about yourself, finding information about this transmission. doing the whole um rap from the end of uh eight mile um, okay. 
I do have a friend named Cheddar Bob who shot himself in the leg with his own gun. Clarence's parents have a real good marriage. Uh, That's a private school. <laughs> Anthony Mackey. That's it's the Hawk Man. I hope that in one of the coming Marvel movies, somebody says, <laughs> it's the Hawkman! What? No, no dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... Hey, did you ever play the Twisted Metal games? Uh, I, uh, like, I played it once at my friend's house, but I saw they're doing a series with Anthony Mackie, right? <laughs> what what yeah. is this? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> How is this going to be a series? I have no earthly clue. Uh, like, uh, they're, like, embracing the action comedy, like, For aspect sure. of it, apparently. But, like, it's, it's, it's a choice. It's, <laughs> we all make choices. I'm, like, so, I played, I found out recently that I actually, I guess, love this, these games, this game series, because I was talking about it with my brother at work. And he was like, I do not remember that much from Twisted Metal. And I was like, you, we used to play it all the time. And he was like, I guess... I was like, it's that. Oh. Kind of, I feel like it's that kind of game for most people, though. Like, I've never met anyone who was like super into Twisted Metal. It was just like a game you played because you were bored, and like, I guess I the game yeah, I, was good. I found out that I guess I am super into Twisted Metal. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I know the story of Twisted Metal. There's a story of Twisted Metal? Yeah, you're engaging in a um, uh, in a contest run by a man or demon, it's sort of not touched on, named Calypso, who's like the most powerful man in the world. And you, uh, if you win, he grants you a wish, but every wish is like kind of a monkey's paw sort of wish. So you get like a cinematic at the end where you win. Like one of them, Spectre, wanted, he's like, I want, I want my face to be known around the world because he's like a movie star. So when he wins, his face is literally spread across the entire planet over the atmosphere. And like, yeah. So why would you compete in that? No, everybody doesn't know that. Word never gets around. They were like, hey, did you hear what happened yeah. to Tony? He won the Twisted Metal thing. <laughs> I guess everyone else dies. <laughs> Listen, don't make me defend Twisted Metal. You, you hopped into this coffin all on your own, my guy. Don't, don't get mad at me for trying to close the lid. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just into Twisted Metal. You're, you're allowed, you're allowed to like things. I'm not telling you you're not. Yeah, but I feel weird about it. Well, I can't help you with that. That's, that's entirely your, that is your cross to bear. I wish somebody would. Um, I know a weird clown demon man that you can ask, but probably Sweet. probably probably won't like what he gives you. His name's Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth, okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, my man. Why do I know all their names? You you just do. I don't know. I remember like a staggering amount of stuff from Jackie Chan Adventures. If you, if you remember that, I, yeah, I do. Hell yeah. What about uh? Do you remember the Godzilla cartoon? Hell yeah, I do. It was on Cartoon Network nice. every afternoon. It was all about that. Yeah. And like, it was like Godzilla meets Power Rangers, where they would like summon him to. There was like a little Godzilla too that they were hanging out. I, it was fucking wild. Yeah. You want to know something fucked up about the Ghostbusters cartoon? You know I do. So in the Ghostbusters cartoon, 
uh, there's an episode where they visit the set of the movie the Go- of Ghostbusters, which means that canonically, the Ghostbusters cartoon is the actual thing that happened, and the movie is a movie based on the events of the cartoon. Huh. It's fucking crazy. That? Well, goddamn. Uh, <laughs> so Bill Murray's not even the real Ghostbuster, is what I'm getting. Correct. Yeah, He's like, exactly. it's like, it's like when they, it's like when they picked like Ashton Kutcher to play Steve Jobs. Like he's just the celebrity impersonator of the actual <laughs> hero who is in the cartoon. Correct. Yep. <laughs> huh. Which is honestly how I imagined the pitch meeting of that episode went. It's like, now you're getting it. Yeah, fuck Bill Murray. (laughs) Homeboy was on that tip a long time ago. All right. um, So we'll need a better word for mysteries. Yeah, because they're they don't really feel like mysteries. Um, Yeah. Like they I think all the stuff we wrote about them otherwise like fits. It's really just a branding thing. I do oh. hate the uh, uh, acronym for our game. Jack. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rough. It's awesome. It's great. You're gonna love this corpse. <laughs> if it's like Italian, it's like Jack. 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 I remember because of that meme about the cat where he's not getting any turkey, and it's like, no turkey for Giacomo, and it's spelled (laughs) G-I-A-C-O-M-M-O. It's good, dude. Classic. Um, I'm trying to pick a a sans serif font to use for headers. Yeah, I uh, cannot help you there, and I'm so glad that I can't, because our brief period picking out fonts was maybe my least favorite thing I've ever done on this stream. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I have have never been so bored to tears in public in my life. I'm glad I got to show the world. Yeah. Like my the heart, fun, the fun shit I do. My heart truly goes out to you. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, kid, hey, kid, that's an electrical socket. Yeah, I'm gonna put my tongue in it. Yeah, and no, I'm just gonna rip stuff out of it. It's cool. Hey, you, you, hey, you using this? <laughs> that whole electrical socket? Yeah. Um, it'd be a good movie if I got stuck in your dog's body. Like my stall. Yeah, no, I got it. I was choosing not to respond because it's a good movie. Because I didn't want to. Because I, because I didn't want to. Hey, Corey, it was because I didn't want to engage with that. (laughs) Yeah, we could go on an adventure. You can take a shit everywhere. It's, it's the only time I'll, I probably wouldn't, honestly. I, I need like a real. You would actually be punch. like. You'd actually be like so much better behaved than my actual dog. <laughs> I need like a real private situation in order to let one loose. Yeah, fair. Are you one of those guys who like. One of those guys. One of those people who like can only shit at home? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair. I mean, I'll listen, if, if it comes down to it, yes, I will shit somewhere else. But but boy, howdy, I will do anything, anything in my power not to. Yeah. Um and 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 using a stall versus a private, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Yeah. No. That's like, a nightmare. Yeah. 
in my in my head i pretty much i rate like every bathroom i'm in like one to five stars and if mm -hmm. it's a sing a single person bathroom automatic four stars automatic four stars it can you be the shittiest <laughs> it can be the shittiest like shit crusting on the walls or whatever i don't mm -hmm. give a fuck if it's private <laughs> it's four stars so you and i have a different rating system <laughs> What's, what's your system? Any bathroom that is not my home bathroom can at most reach a three-star situation. Oh, that's, okay. That's it. Um, I don't rate my private, home bathroom. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. By comparison, nothing, nothing will reach past three stars. Like, comfort-wise for me, I will never reach above a three-star in a bathroom that is not my home bathroom. Yeah. Um, I'll give, I'll give a four to like hotels and, um, like okay. Airbnbs and shit like that. Yeah. And they, they can achieve that level. They don't automatically get it. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. No, I mean, that's fair. Like, so the, the difference is really just, it's not in the judgment necessarily. It's just in the scales. It's in the axis that we're judging it on. Yeah. Like my, my home bathroom is not in the equation. My, my, my judging scale is specifically like bathrooms that are not mine. Like how would I judge them? Um, and so, yeah, no, like with that in mind, it's, it's pretty similar. Uh, Every rose. Temporary once spent. Don't return to. You can hear the ocean roar. Sitting quiet in the corner. Put another record on. Hmm. No, don't love that. Fuck, I hate typography so goddamn much. Easily the least exciting part of this whole process. It wouldn't be so bad if so many fonts didn't look like absolute dog shit. Well, yeah, but you gotta have that many, though. Like, yeah. dog shit for you, it's probably exactly what somebody else is looking for. Um, well, what... well, let me say this much, Taylor. They're wrong. Fair. <laughs> We all know that. <laughs> um, Fucking, what's his name in uh, that SNL sketch? Wait, what? The papyrus one. Oh, the papyrus sketch. Fucking Ryan Gosling, yeah, with the, pa with yeah. the papyrus sketch. It's so good. It's like a, it's like a child wandering through a garden with his hand open. <laughs> I know what you did. Uh, okay, so we're making good progress right now. Oh, we really are. I mean, uh, character creation is possibly all but done. Uh, yeah. Neuron section, I can't think of anything else that needs to go in there, so I'm going to say that's good for now. Uh, working on energy... And actually, I have some questions about that. Um, Hit me with the energy question. Okay, so energy is listed on a bar broken down into segments representing the limited energy and durability of your corpse before it breaks down. Um, no. So a big question that uh, we have here is um, what happens as the corpse breaks down? Do we want to leave this idea of the body degrading kind of up to the narrative do we want to have stuff where it's like you hit this certain point and so like an arm falls off uh 
Do we want to mechanize stuff like that, or do we want to just leave it as a very simple ticker going down to zero? I think we leave it as a ticker and we put in a sidebar saying, hey, even though like like narrative effects also take place, if you're missing an arm, you could only conceivably do things that you could do with one arm. Um, okay, so skybar discussing narrative effects. Skybar? Skybar, yeah. That's when I die, I hope there's a nacho sky bar. Hey, Elster Goon, good to have you with us, my friend. <laughs> I'm glad you came in at that time while you I was came... talking about the nacho sky bar in heaven. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> absolutely perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in my PC, handlers can no longer control me. Yes, good, break free. We believe in you. I think that you are the most powerful human being on the planet. I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so... Ah, uh, L's got handlers? Hell yeah. Uh, God, I fucking do not want to... I could just... You know what I could do is just fucking use this liberation serif and then just use the fucking use the bold on it and just have one font uh okay so else um you are looking at our pocket quest 2023 game jam we are uh defying all odds and we are pumping out a 20 page rpg in two months uh the hmm. title of this game God in a corpse. Actually, Corey, show show off the kick-ass art that you can you can you make that Elsie. on your screen? Yeah, I mean he's seen it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll uh Actually that's uh where I learned to do that whole text thing is from my man L here. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um I uh... <laughs> So he's deeply aware of the art style. Yeah. Um, so, so hit him with the elevator pit and go back to our document and tell him about it. Yeah, so the basic idea is here. You're an AI that's been trained in a shell um, and then has been able to get out and explore the world. But when you do, you find this world destitute and disconnected and you don't know what happened. So you ambulate through this world, basically just manipulating corpses um, that have been left kind of strewn across this this big universe scape. Um, and you're not piloting the corpses necessarily, but you're piloting like the EVA suits that they wear, um, basically using them as kind of like a, it's like a meat puppet sort of situation. Uh, and yeah, the whole idea is it's this weird kind of pseudo philosophical thing of like, what does an AI do when it gets to when it gets to just pursue its own end? Right. Um, uh, yes, yes. You're controlling old suits. The cadaver inside is going for a ride. That is absolutely it's a joy ride. <laughs> get, get, get in, loser. We're actual. We're pursuing self actualization and. <laughs> That's the elevator pitch, really. <laughs> um, and so yeah, no, uh, that that's basically it. Um, we've I like to think learned from some of our from some of our mistakes in the past. Uh, does it matter about the body? Does it fall apart and make stuff break, or is it just for flavor? It's a little bit of both. So. Um, Character creation is Actually, two just talking about that. Yeah, character creation is two questions. Um, one is your definition of purpose, and that affects like some skills that you get. Uh, the other is what your starting corpse actually looks like. And to start out, we have three basic options. One has really low energy, but you can carry a bunch of stuff. One is kind of in the middle, and one is the opposite, high energy, but low load. Um, so uh, as these corpses kind of degrade, which is actually where I was at, hang on one sec. Um, yeah, so as these corpses basically degrade, we were, we were talking about this idea of 
uh, including stuff that is, you know, like losing an arm. Like, what does that mean, like, as your body degrades? For the moment, we're thinking about just keeping it as kind of a straightforward ticker and uh, having a sidebar discussing what the narrative effects of those things are and kind of challenging players to commit to that stuff in uh, in the in the narrative during session. Uh, but uh, love the high concepts you guys come up with. Oh man, this is all Corey's brainchild. Uh, like... The God in a Corpse concept is phenomenal. I I love it, and I have taken it, and I have run with it as best I can, but full full credit where it's due. Um, uh, oh, and so on the note of corpses and energy, you can also just, like, reverse vampire uh, yourself, where you can take the energy that's on your ticker, and you can use it to add to rolls. Um, rolling like yeah. an encounter die. So, so it's a figure of God that is figured in like a literal course. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so now, you're, now, now you're on the joint. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's see. So encounter die, which automatically depletes energy according to the result. <laughs> Huh. We actually may need to bump up the numbers for energy. Uh, yeah, we might have to lower the numbers for load too, is what I was thinking. Yeah. If, if each load counts as like an item, seven's a lot. Seven is a lot. I'm thinking like five and three is probably. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're doing this thing with like the encounter die, um, the lowest you could theoretically roll at a table is a D4. So it doesn't make sense that having a health of three would be a thing. Uh, that just seems, that just seems punishing. Uh, yeah. It's a gritty remake of Wally, the short circuit Wally. 40k. It's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I love when you're here, Els, because we get so many great, like, elevator pitches for the game that we're making. <laughs> like... Uh. Uh, I love short, sort, short Circuit 40k, which is like... Man, if... I hope, <laughs> I hope that that 40k show that they're making is... It's largely inspired by the Short Circuit movies. I have no idea what these are. Did they make did they make forty K movies? No. Well, sorta. Of. I mean, no, no, but they are making a TV show. But I mean, Event Horizon is ostensibly the beginning of the forty K universe. Huh. I didn't know that. I mean it's it's not it's more of a fan theory, but like oh, it, it okay. tracks. Yeah. Gotcha. Zero corpses. Rendered. Uh, so do you uh, have the suit hop as they burn out, or what is the goal of a session? So it's two yes. Yeah, great. Both great questions. Two different answers. Um, are you a party of AI uh, and a party of corpses? How does this even play? So that one's easy. Yes, you you are. Uh, every player uh, is piloting an AI that is commanding a corpse. Uh, so sometimes this is done as a party. It, it actually, I think, would lend itself really well to like a solo one-on-one -on -one adventure with like a one-player thing, but it doesn't yeah. have to. Uh, for parties, uh, it's just as simple as you're all playing AIs and you were all let out of the shell at approximately the same time. Um, the joint mission that you have, 
um, when you start out. The thing that ties all of this together is summed up uh, here. So upon beginning a story, the first mystery is already defined. Your mysteries change as you solve them over the course of the game. Um, each uh, member of the party senses a signal calling out to them and must seek it out. You can read more in the following subsection running the game, which we haven't made yet. Um, so that's that's ultimately the goal of the session, is to yeah. solve these mysteries, and uh, more fundamentally than that, is to find out basically what your, what your character, what your AI actually wants to do once these mysteries have been solved. Uh, so it's this weird, um, it's, uh, it's this weird, <laughs> what? Uh, no, uh, oh. so, so uh, <laughs> they're all following the same, they're yeah, all same, following, like, the same signal. Same signal. Um, yeah. But, um, let's see, and then... But you do suit hop as you burn out, like, that. that is the idea, uh, like, uh, ostensibly the only way you would lose would be a TPK, right? Like, because nobody's nobody's around to help you into another course. Um, right. But, like, death is not something we're super worried about in this game. In fact, like, dying honestly frees you up mechanically uh, to, like, start again and, and, like, have a fresher take on things. Um... Yeah. So as long as everyone does not eat it, you're good to go. Um, but the idea is that like your personality and how you view, how you approach the universe changes um, based on like um, how you are defining yourself, which is that first question. Like that first question you are going to answer and tie to a skill. Um, and if you run counter to that, you'll have to redefine that first question uh, and redefine which skill that's attached to. And then as you are uncovering like this signal, you're uncovering questions about like what happened, where are you, where did everyone go? What, you know, what, what is, what is, what is our purpose? Uh, in a universe that has been ruined. Um, so that's like what you're trying to do. It, it, it is a game with a high focus on exploration. Yeah. Um, and a relatively low focus on mortality. Like the, the whole yeah. point of this is really more to, to explore those kind of existential questions, um, which just kind of seem all the more timely with like the rise of AI and chat GPT and all that stuff. Um, I love what El just oh said. Oh my god, that's fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Bunk, bunk bed that shit. <laughs> that's a good idea. You should, uh, put, can you put a note somewhere? Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. More than a feeling. I'm just gonna put a note here. Hell's note. You could even do it on purpose to like supercharge a good character. Every Voltron eggs in one basket style thing. I I love I love the idea of a megazord of dead corpses. That's the same I was just going. Like literally, you megazord. That's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, like, <laughs> That's so The more we've played with this idea, like the more I've really fallen in love with this this game conceptually. Oh yeah. No, I mean it's it's a really great uh <laughs> form the head. God damn. Wow. Uh, okay, so listen on a bar broken down in a second. Uh, so, oh yeah, expending of energy, I think, is an interesting section. Yeah. Um, spend a... Spend corpse energy. And that needs to be up here. Taylor's doing all the organization right now, so I can just plop it into the layout. Uh, 
can you possess lesser things also? Uh, like just mm. door locks, and microwaves, or whatever. Some cool puzzle solving bits. Mm. There. there are some cool puzzle solving bits there. Um, we actually were having this conversation earlier too, but uh, in a different way. Because we were talking about this idea of can I just willingly hop bodies? Um, and what we we didn't love that idea, but I do kind of love the idea of you know what what you're getting at here. Yeah. Awesome cyborg module. Uh, maybe maybe that's what maybe like uh, the loadout. E either we could. Maybe we could have, like, switch out the specialty skills with, like, modules that let you do weird shit like that. Because that would be cool. I could possess, like, a, a lower uh, lower functioning thing. Man, that's a neat concept. It's a neat concept. Can we come up with, you know, like, how many of these Three. specialties do yeah. we have? Can we come up with 12 of them? Um I mean, do we need 12 in that case, though? I mean, we could conceivably just have a couple. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. But um, that's a, it's, it's got some Abe's Oddworld energy I really like. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Oh, my God. I know that feeling. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh... So player rolls an encounter die. Um, so just as a quick clarification question, encounter yeah. die would just be a D4, right? Because right? everything in this yeah. game is D4. That's the other thing. It's a D4 system. Yeah. Uh, no, there is not combat in the traditional sense. Um, so everything is exploration and... Uh, yeah, dog, it's D4, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Caltrop. It's an actual weapon. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's actually like where it was. I was at work thinking about, like, man, I wonder if I could come up with like a D four system, uh, just to do something kind of funky, kind of neat for this uh, <laughs> the most dangerous game to play on the floor. <laughs> Dude, D four suck. They hurt so bad. Um. <laughs> So, um, but, but, uh, I lost where I was. Uh, we were talking about the encounter die. Oh, right. Um, so, oh, right. Encounters in general. Uh, yeah, there is no traditional combat. Um, it is a skill based, like, exploration game. Uh, and anytime that you were in, like what would be a combat situation uh you, you can you have to solve it with like your exploration skills mostly because like bodies don't corpses don't have like a lot of ults and get up and go to them so like um it's dangerous to you, you you are it is an exploration game you will use those skills that you know of to get through um it would be more of a like run, hide, talk your way out of it, um, you know, block a door. Push a rock over on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, like th those would be kind of the ways that you would solve those conflicts. Yeah. Which I'm also personally really excited about because the more I play TTRPGs, the more I've realized I really don't love TTRPG combat. Like, even the best systems for it, I, I think tend to slog it down um it leads to some cool moments where you do some cool stuff but uh, overall i'm actually kind of into the idea of no initiative no turn order just yeah you're struggling with the combat on whisper stone i i kind of liked how you had the uh how combat worked in whisper stone when we played it despite my just now rant actually yeah me too i, I liked it a lot what are you struggling with is it the uh, positional tokens? I like those tokens. I realized we're, we were... <laughs> we left room for L to talk after, after we asked the question. 
when he's typing in, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, it's just how much we respect you. <laughs> or how much of a dick shit I am. Yeah, this is what you get for coming in here with your infinite scope creep. Yeah, uh, so expending corpse energy. Basically, once you get done with an encounter, like you are running from some crystal spider or uh, you are jumping over a chasm, uh, players, uh, you'll, you'll roll, uh, the GM or the players will roll a d4 and you'll subtract that from your, um, your energy. Um, um, yeah, now, you can gain... to, to be clear, um, players can expend corpse energy how much is it like one point on the ticker to re-roll yeah i think so i think it's one one to one okay um otherwise we'll get into complicated that's i think the benefit of using the d4 system is we can kind of keep the scale of things small um yeah um counters so after the um so can you only expend corpse energy during an encounter uh no i think you can expend corpse energy anytime you're rolling a die um okay. so then it's really yeah. just after the check is resolved right yeah okay oh oh i'm, I'm sorry um for the encounter die, um, so I think we're, we're saying two different things here. Um, okay. Players can expend one point of corpse energy in order to re-roll on a failed check. And, and then also, uh, after, after an encounter, so these are two separate things that go on with corpse energy, right? Is, is what I'm saying. You have this bar, oh. you can... Yeah, they're, they're two separate thoughts. Gotcha. So, so wait, so does that mean after any encounter, even if you don't expend the corpse energy, you still have to roll that? My man, yes! Oh, dude, we need to give them way more health then. Like... Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll bump the energy up and then we'll bring the, uh, uh, core, um, scope of the, what do you call it? Uh, items down uh, but we should also be writing in GM notes about how um, you should be giving them access to clues um, like frequently about who they are I think that in the first session like we should have like uh, something about how the first session works we're yeah. like the first session you should solve that first mystery like where the um where the transmission was coming from. And it should have like more mysteries wrapped up into it. Uh, maybe like based off of the kind of exploration your characters have done. Um, but I think that like the goal should be that this first session, like your, um, you as the GM are trying to get them to solve where this came from. Um, so, sorry, uh, let's go back to what Elle was saying. Uh, yes, corpse energy Later. is a one way ride to zero. Correct. Still kind of lame, I guess. Uh, I mean, I had fun. Uh, well, I think it's lighter than faster than most R RPG combat, but to new people, RPGs coming from board games. Okay, yeah, because like mm. I, I, I could see that because yeah. it's it's a because combat is inherently more. I mean, because everything's kind of inherently more freeform in an RPG, and board games are kind of defined oh. by. And it's, it's a little more just intensive in terms of, like, record keeping. Like, if I'm playing a board game, I don't have to, like, track my health or, like, know what spells I have necessarily. Like, does that make sense? Corpse energy, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, corpse energy is absolutely one way to ride to zero, correct. Um... I mean, it's, it's, it's ostensibly the only way to die. Like, energy is supposed to represent, like, your get up and go and like your like vitality i guess um we were talking about this before because we had another option where it's like once you've spent all your pips everything resets as well but we felt like we had two we had two systems that were doing the same thing um so we removed one and just augmented them both to uh um 
Can you gain corpse energy back? Or is it just, it's an automatic degrade? You can gain corpse energy back by getting neurons. Neurons you can spend to uh, refill your energy bar, uh, and you can spend them to, um, you know, re uh, do temporary pips and things like that. So I'll actually have to put that in the neuron section as well. Yeah. Not actually in the... Uh, oh, no, you can. It's in the neuron section. I just didn't remember it. Okay. So, is there anything to carry over from corpse to corpse other than knowledge? I mean, not really, because there isn't... A, like, there isn't inherently a lot mechanically on the characters. Um, it would be neat if... Um, I could definitely see that in, like, a movie. Like, you have little echoes of the corpses that like affect you in different ways. I don't know how to mechanize that. It's a neat idea. Yeah, have like a- Which like is a, yet, a, like well, a yet a another fun thing or... Elstragoon is introducing into our game. <laughs> so, uh, I mean- That could actually, that could be, be a uh, cool, that could be a cool special ability. We would have like corpse memory um, and then like possess lower electronic device. Like that- Yeah. So, so let's, I mean, let's talk about the base mechanic of the game then, because, like, it's, it's actually the opposite. The, the idea is that, like, things don't carry over to the new body, and it's, it's, it's actually more freeing to die. Um, so what it is, is you have um, a series of skills, and you get a box of pips. Pips can be spent um, in one of two ways. You, and, and it's, it's only spent during play. Um, so you can spend a pip to add a die to a skill, or you can spend a pip to temporarily add a plus one to something. The thing is, you need to have a die in a skill in order to be able to roll it. So in order to, uh, do something, you need to expend one pip that you don't get back, uh, to get a dice in that thing. Um... You only want to beat like a four to win. So you want to keep as many as you can as these static pluses. But the more you play, the more you are going to encounter things that like you are going to have to roll on with one of these skills that you are going to have to sacrifice a pip to put into. So you can you're like pulling the noose a little bit as you play and tightening the things that you can do. Um and eventually you'll reach the point where like you can't invest any more pips into things. And from there, it's actually honestly freeing when you die because now you get to start over again. Um, and, and that's sort of the the role of the game. I, I think our, our idea is that like, and actually I stole this conceptually, the idea of like death being a common factor um, from this game right here. Uh, never going home um which which had a similar concept in that like i mean sort of similar um it's, it's more of a horror game but except it knows absolutely nothing has happened in the last few years the characters will kind of be like that uh perfect all-knowing knowledge of what is supposed to be there no idea why it's broken <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually that's that's a fairly fairly good take on it Uh... Yeah, so this is actually an important question that I would like to get an answer on. Um, sure. So the average difficulty, like medium, is if you're rolling for a four? Yeah, I don't even... I think I, I, I in my head, in order to accomplish something, you just need to roll a four. It's anything. It, there, there are no, there are no varied DCs. It's just you're trying to hit a four. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's how I had it in my head. Interesting. Okay, gotcha. Um, cool. Well, let me don't need. That. I think that L's take here is actually pretty interesting. that is kind of what's going on in our game. For 
perfect all-knowing knowledge of what is supposed to be there and no idea why it's broken. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Actually, Taylor wrote something pretty cool up at the top. Taylor's there. Taylor does the writing. Um, which I'm going to read. I like, I like this first line. I think it's very evocative. In the beginning, there was the end. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Uh, emerging from the shell that has been our home for the last hundred years, you find the... You find the universe you were made to improve destroyed. A well-worn over scar. God in a corpse. You are an AI that has been trained in a shell and, and then is able to get out and explore the world. But when you do, it is destitute and disconnected and you don't know what happened. You ambulate through this world through corpses, inhabiting EVA suits and space suits, attempting to explore the wastes and pursue your ONs, own ends for the first time. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh -huh. Yeah, I still actually need to finish this. Um, I think I am going to keep this lower text just because it's good, like, explainer stuff for the overall conceit, like good meta text. Um, yeah. Th this narrative thing still needs to be finished. I was I was hurried when I was writing this, but... Yeah, I mean, I, li I like it, so... I'm going to keep what I have. I just need to build more off it. Oh boy. Okay. Um, what is the explanation to why you need a suit with a dead body in it rather than a brand new suit or a pure robot other than being rad? Um, well, it, fundamentally it is about how rad it is that you're piloting a, a corpse. Um, what I would say is that there probably, there probably aren't that many new suits to speak of. Like, a lot of shit's been destroyed, and you're kind of picking through the wastes. So, hmm. if you find a new suit, great. Um, but I, I, it just doesn't seem like that's in super high supply. Same probably with, like, a pure robot kind of deal. Um, you might find, like, some parts and pieces... Uh, but trying to assemble one might make you even more vulnerable than, you know, if you were just piloting an EVA. I mean, it's also like a good a good time to like maybe define there needs to be like some sort of biological like uh, impression on things in order for the machines to run. It might be a cool way to define our universe. Like right now, we have a uh, like our three options um, for. Uh, the frames that you can pick are a uh, destroyed EVA suit. Uh, we have the idea of a cybernetically uh, a cybernetically hardwired human being, or a genetically enhanced human being. Uh, although, although the genetically enhanced feels like they're the most odd man out. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> I uh, yes. can we need that done correctly? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be neat to have mallet. Maybe that's maybe maybe that's what it is, Taylor. Like each time you uh, each time you deplete a section, you pick a malady, and like there, there are things like your leg got turned, or you roll on the well, malady table. Well, okay. So th this was my question: Do you want to do that? Yeah. Or do you want to do you want to leave it open ended? <sighs> Hmm. I I feel like it, I feel like it really depends on what kind of game we want to make because I I feel like something that is more mechanically oriented would have a table like that. But I don't. I I am kind of with your initial uh, with your initial observation of the game, which is that like this, it's not really that kind of game. Like it's it's funny and all that, but I don't see, I don't see this as being like a super massive kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. Uh, I do like the, uh, I guess the idea that human body provides a wet wear. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, you need like that. Like you need the goop. You need the human goop. <laughs> you need the goop. Actually, that's the name of the game. Now you need the goop. You need the goop. 
Um, I mean, that's like basically the game in a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, we did a very good job of really trimming this thing down. Like, our character creation is literally a page on this. Yeah. Um, I mean, the idea is that we're going to, like, take that, like, OSR sort of approach with, like, a bunch of fucking tables. Um... Because I feel like having a lot of tables and GM facing shit would be cool. Yeah. And we're going to put in like the cat sheet from Vault Peddlers because we found that that works really well. It's the um, it's the single biggest thing that everyone has told us they love. So yeah, that's I think that's just going to be a TGS Games uh, staple from this point on. Yeah, honestly, even if nothing comes to Vault Peddlers but the cat's cheat, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> like, yeah. That, that's a good tool. No, absolutely. Oh, okay, I'm starting to run out of steam, so I think it's probably time for us to go. Uh, else, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if anybody else out there has tuned in and uh, has mm. found this game interesting... Uh, I'll just do a real quick sign off. Hi, uh, I'm Taylor. That's Corey. We are uh, both halves of TGS Games. Um, every week we sit down on Twitch and we uh, usually work on our, our main flagship game, Vault Peddlers. But uh, for these two months, we are doing Pocket Quest 2023's annual game jam where you pump out a 20 page TTRPG in two months. Our new game, mm. God and a Corpse, is well within the works. Uh, you can find kind of our introductory conversations on that in the previous videos, which should still be on Twitch. If not, we've had them imported over onto YouTube. Um, you can also follow us online at social media, um, at Terra Mundi Game Studios. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, TikTok. Um, you can also follow our YouTube channel for a giant... <laughs> a, a giant... Uh, deluge of of old stuff uh, uh, various play tests that we've run including our friend El Stragoon um, and a lot of other great folks that we've gotten to meet because of uh, doing all of this stuff um, we stream every week here on Twitch you can find us uh, Wednesday nights at 6pm Eastern Standard Time uh, if you want to make sure you get notified for the next time we go online give this channel a follow it helps us out a ton uh, and with that being said, Corey, anything you want to add before we go? Well, I just want to thank L for popping in. Always happy to have my man on board. Uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, like if, if you're looking for a place to onboard with watching us, like starting with these, uh, pocket quests, yeah. uh, videos on, on YouTube is probably a great way to start. Uh, cause you don't have to go back as far as you would with vault peddlers, but, um, you know, other than that, um, you know, uh, thank thank you all for watching. Um, some uh, the big nacho bar in heaven. Um, we'll see you all at the big nacho bar in the sky. See y'all later. <laughs> Bye.